Hello and welcome to example sheet 2, question 3. Um, we're looking at refrigerant 134A and as a compressor of a refrigerator at 140 kilopascals, minus 10 degrees, uh, and a rate of 0.3 meters cubed per minute, leaving at 1 megapascal. The isentropic efficiency of the compressor is given. Um, this is an important thing to note. Refrigerant enters the throttling valve at 0.9 and 30 dBs evaporator saturated vapor 18.5 minus 18.5 degrees C. Show the cycle on the TS diagram and determine the power input to the compressor. So looking at this on the TS diagram, remember you've got your uh, refrigerant passing through a compressor, condenser, throttled and then evaporated. Okay, so plotting this on TS diagram, you've got point 0.1 here, and you've got the, as it passes through the compressor, um, typically the entropy is going to increase in reality, but since we're given the isentropic efficiency, we're also interested in this point here, which is 2S, and that's point 0.2A, and Then we're passing down um, through the saturation line over to here, to 0.3, which is 0.95 MPA and 30 degrees C, shown from the question. Um, it's also important knowing, looking from up here, enters the compressor, so this is at point 0.1, at point 0.1 it's 0.14 megapascals and minus 10 degrees C. Of course point 0.1 to 2 is W in, which we're interested in finding. Returning back to our cycle then, from 3 to 4, um, and there's point 0.5 is here, passing along there and back up to Point one. Um, of course, this is the um, heat rejected from the refrigerator, removed from the cold space, and QH is the heat rejected to the environment. And at point five, we're seeing minus 18.5 degrees C saturated vapor, and V1 is given as 0.3 meter cubed per minute. So there we've shown the diagram. I'd recommend you, you do draw this in the exam um, before doing the question. I find it a lot easier to to visualize it myself, but of course time time is of the essence, so you know it's up to you how detailed you want to go. Um, so W in, which we're interested in finding the work input to the compressor, mass flow rate, H2A, so the actual enthalpy value at point 0.2 minus the enthalpy value at point 0.1. Okay, so in order to find uh, W in, we need to find the value um, uh, mass flow rate, H2, A, and H1. Um, quite simply, um, at point 0.1, we're given a pressure P equal to 0.14 megapascals and a temperature equal to 10 degrees C. So from table A12 um, you'll see that T saturation at 1 is for those given values is minus 18.77 degrees C. Since T1 is greater than T saturation you need to use table A13 since the fluid is superheated and what you'll see H1 is equal to 246.36 kilojoules per kg um, S1 is equal to 0.9724 kilojoules per kg Kelvin and the Pacific volume is equal to 0.14 605 meters cubed per kg. Since we have these values now, it's quite a simple equation to work out 
the mass flow rate since specific volume is equal to volume flow rate over mass flow rate so we simply just rearrange this equation um, and you'll see 0.3 meters cubed divided by the value we just found times by 60 seconds of course because we need to convert from uh, meters cubed per minute um, into meters cubed per second And what you find is the mass flow rate is equal to 0.03424 kilograms per second. You'll also notice that we've identified H1 as well here. So we're just interested now in finding the value of H2. Um, we know at point 0.2. to pressure is one megapascals and and the isentropic efficiency of the compressor is equal to 78 percent um, we know that s2 is equal to s1 um, for isentropic and hence therefore it's equal to 0.9724 kilojoules per kg Kelvin. H2S can be found by interpolating the superheated R134A table A13. Um, I've been through interpolation in the previous video, so I'm just going to skip over it here. Um, so you can see we found the value for H2S there. Um, now, what we're interested in, we know the equation from the data sheet of the compressor. N comp is equal to H2S minus H1 over H2A minus H1. So we can simply just rearrange this equation now to find H2A. So H2A is equal to 301.35 kilojoules per kg. Note that the value we found for H2A con corresponds to the highest temperature value in the system. Of course, that will be this point here. Um, that's just worth something knowing. If you were asked to find the highest value in the system, you could then interpolate this. Um, and if you run through that workings, you'll find that it's the highest temperature in the system is 67.61 degrees centigrade. Um, finally, to return back to the question in hand, we're interested in finding. So, if you scroll up now, you can see that we've actually found all the values that we require. We found the mass flow rate, we found the value of enthalpy at 2, and the value of enthalpy at 0.1. So, it's just a simple case of plugging in the values that we found. Okay, so part B asks us to look at the rate of heat removal from the refrigerated space. So we're actually interested in QL here, so we're interested in this region. So if we scroll down now, you'll see QL is equal to the mass flow rate times by H5 minus H4. Okay, so let me bring your attention back to the fact that process 3 to 4 is isenthalpic. Therefore, entropy is the same, so H3 is equal to H4. Um, the reason this is important is because we're given a series of values for at point 3, so if we can find H3, we therefore know H4. So P3 is equal to 0.5 MPa, given in the question, and T3 is equal to 30 degrees C. Uh, therefore, looking, these, looking at the chart, you'll see that T saturation at this pressure is equal to 37.48 degrees C. 
Therefore, since Tsat is greater than T3, the refrigerant is not saturated vapor. It is in fact saturated fluid. So what we we can say therefore, H3 is equal to HF, saturated fluid, at 30 degrees C. Um, this is using table A11, and you'll get a value of 93.58 kilojoules per kg. Now, since we know H3 is equal to H4, and we've previously calculated the mass flow rate, all that's left to find is H5, and we've solved this problem. So at T5, it's given that the temperature is 18, minus 18.5 degrees C. So interpolating chart A11, you'll find that H5 is equal to Hg at temperature equal to minus 18.5 degrees C. And I, ran, I previously ran through this interpolation, so I'm going to skip over. I'm going to leave the workings on the screen. Okay, so in some cases, you might want to work this bit out separately if you've got multiple interpolations to do using similar values. So for that particular point, if we just call that X, you will get that equal to 0.75. And when you plug in all our known values here on this side, you'll get the value of H5 to be equal to 239.33 kilojoules per kg. Based on this, looking back at our original equation, we can easily just plug in the values and you'll see that QL is equal to 4.99 kilowatts. Okay, now we're just interested in part C, the pressure drop and rate of heat gain in the line between the evaporator and the compressor. So that's between here and here. So we're interested in, and of course, we're interested in this region here between 0.5 and 0.1. So moving down, um, of course, the pressure drop between 0.1 and 0.5. Um, change in pressure, of course, simply equal to P5 minus P1. Um, so we need to interpolate to find P5. Um, the reason I pointed out calculating that X value earlier was that it just can make things a little bit easier when you come to interpolate if you're using the equation like I did. So you can see now just that that equation can simplify down this bit um, quite simply. We're using the same chart, same values, so you can just save a bit of time. So, change in pressure can quite simply be calculated then from calculating the value we've got for P5 and we just minus the value for P1 away from that. And it leaves you with change in pressure of 1.72 kilopascals. Finally, we're asked to find the rate of heat gain in the line between the evaporator and the compressor. So this is just a change in enthalpy between points 1 and 5. So quite simply, you're going to get Q gain is equal to the mass flow rate, H1 minus H5. And when you plug in the values that we've got, you'll get Q gain is equal to 0 0.241 kilowatts.